this could it could all go horribly wrong at any minute. It is time for the uh, 164th edition of Lewis Black's Rancast entitled, uh, What Have We Had an Election and Nobody Voted? Huh? Because that's almost uh, what's going to be uh, seemingly on the horizon right now as we have chosen the candidates. Have we? No, we haven't, but that's what we're told. Those are going to be our candidates. What if we had an election and nobody showed up, didn't leave their homes, just said, go fuck yourselves, because we didn't want this. I have never heard repeated over and over and over again, and I'm slapping, and people, they'll say to me, well, you shouldn't be making noises. I don't give a fuck, okay? It's either that or I break something here. It's unbelievable to me. Maybe it's the two-party system. Maybe that's what's at fault. Okay, we go, we don't want them. Well, it's here. Here they are. We don't want them. No, that's who we're giving you. How did that happen? We, we don't want them. We don't want to vote for them. It's an election. That, that, it, it, it's the election no one wants. I, I mean, I, 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 every, oh, it's repeated over and over and over again. I'm even repeating it myself. I, 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 what, what are we supposed to do? If, the, if, if this is our system, how does it work? If, if, if what we say has no input, what so fucking ever? It, 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 we don't want to go through this again. It's like PTSD to the, to the fifth power. You're going to drag us through this shit again? Same nonsense, same discussion. Go nowhere, okay? Well, you did this and, rah, 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 and Billy Goat's gruff and, rah, 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 and we're going to get over the bridge. Stop it. Please. Well, he's saying this and he's saying that. They both have these, you know, verbal problems. They both have problems, major problems. They're too old. We all know they're too old. But, you know, he that goes to Christmas, stop it. Okay, the other one is babbling. They're both babbling. They're both, it's enough is enough is enough. No, but he really is doing a better job. Well, it, it's not presented that way to the public, okay? You can say it all you want, all right? And uh, if, if it's not getting across, it's not getting across. And if you can't figure out a way to, to at least make uh, inflation feel better, I, I, how did the Democrats, incapable, I say this every time, of explaining what they've done, it's, and partly it has to do with the ghost of Christmas past. It, and I'll say it, you can't hear him. Okay? I, I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to, I don't know how we ended up at, at this point in time with these two candidates and others that are across the boards that, that won. I mean, you got to, it, it, it's through, through a Congress that, how does George Santos be the, that's the pick of the Republican Party. He wins and he wins. Okay. We're not even paying attention. So the party has to at least try. That's the deal. Okay. They've got to at least kind of call the herd, so to speak. And it isn't even a herd. It's a few people who actually want to do this and less and less people and certainly less qualified people. And anybody who wants to be president, as we all know, is out of their fucking mind. And we just get proven that over and over and over and over again. As much as you may like, not like um, Biden, at least he shows up at things that he should show up at. Um, and, that, and that is, you know, to his credit. But that's not enough to be the president. You know, and, and for some reason he's able to, get people to deal with, the, okay, he's made, you know, that they've been able to make some deals along the way. And then people get pissed at the deals. It's, it's, and I'm not, I'm not, I can't, I'm only, I, 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 this is too much is what it is. This is just too much. Here's what's up on March 21st. Uh, if you're in Providence, around Providence, near Providence, or thought, boy, I'd like to go to Providence, Rhode Island, I'm going to be at the Veterans Memorial Auditorium there. And then on March 22nd, I head on up to the Wilbur Theater in Boston, Massachusetts. March 23rd, 
Uh, Portland, Maine, I can already hear at the side of the road, the lobsters, their, their little claws banging together as if applauding my arrival because they know I'm coming there to eat them and they're all excited. And I will be at the Miller Auditorium there, or the Merrill Auditorium, my apologies. And then on March 24th, Orono, Maine at the uh, Collier Center. And um, I'm also going to read to you where I'll be uh, in Europe because uh, I want to catch you up with that for those of you who may be visiting there or those who live there. Uh, I've got to get the word out. The Mir Bart Theater uh, in um, Amsterdam on May 14th, uh, May 16th, going to Belgium at the La Madeleine. I like to call it La Madeleine. May 19th, I'm at London at the Leicester Square Theater, May 22nd. Berlin, yes, Berlin, Germany has finally invited me to perform there. It's waited a long time, and they're finally ready for me at the Ernst Reuter Saal, if that's the way you pronounce it. I'm giving it a shot, May 24th, Sweden. Yes, uh, Stockholm, to be exact, Sodra Tertin, Sodra Tiartan. I, I gave it a shot. That's what I got. That's why we're, this could be the last... Uh, the last time, next time, we'll try something else, huh? And then meanwhile, you got uh, the, the, the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, who was tremendous, tremendous with the mental state. I, and I'm going to be, I, I don't like being put in this position of having to talk about the, the, uh, the Republicans over and over and over again. But come on, guys. Good God. You're not even trying anymore. And this guy... Well, you know, I, uh, me and my son monitor each other's porn consumption. They monitor their porn viewing. These two, the the one, the, both of them, uh, very religious, extremely re- so religious. It, it gives me, uh, it gives me eczema, is what it does. I mean, some of the stuff that comes out of Mike Johnson's mouth in terms of religion is just, you know, and. They're, they're, they need porn monitors. They're not watching porn. I don't watch porn, and I don't need a porn monitor. You know, I mean, I just have never taken any interest in it. It looks like chicken parts being slapped together to me. It just doesn't work. Maybe there's new porn. Maybe I'm missing something. Uh, I like the kind of seduction uh, that might take place, but not. Oh, boy. And, you, and then one of the chicken parts is. Wearing uh, uh, the uh, mailman's or milkman's outfit. What 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 planet am I on? A milkman's outfit. Good God, Lewis. You know, could be the delivery boy. You know, uh, she just. Oh, I just forgot the the other chicken parts wearing a slip. What am I talking about? Look, these they Mike Johnson and his son monitored their porn, huh? And he. Stated a lot. Why would you even state it? We we all know that you know that's a. It's insane and keep it a secret. We don't need to know that. And then they went, yeah, boy, that would be great to have a president. I mean, to have a, a speaker of the house or a representative. Let's get to the point. <laughs> have a representative who uh, whose point is monitored by his seventeen year old, and that he would share with us. Wow. And while we're on Congress, uh, or Congress is on us, Hunter Biden had his big private meeting uh, with the uh, with the with the congressional group. That God, we're going to get your dad. We're going to we're going to just hang him from the yard arm. Something I've never said publicly or even privately, but we're going to get him. We're going to impeach his ass. He's he made you made tons of money for him. He's made tons of money. Come on. So they take him in there and they got nothing. They got, just stop it. Just get on with the business at fucking hand. All right? Do your fucking job. All right? There's a ton of shit that needs to be done. We need to, we need to get the border secure. Well, we need, but you know, we really, no. You need to get the border, but we, no, no. But we need to get uh, Ukraine, uh, you know, we need to kind of get them uh, the weapons. The oh, no, and we got this thing over here with Bob Hunter, but no. Nope, and then uh, we've got to, to deal with Gaza and Israel, and uh, and the list continues. And we've got and we got to, you know to deal with a, an inflation rate that people is driving people nuts. And then uh, we 
we're, and then they're, what, what's the vote going to be on whether we're taxing Social Security, which just came up? Are you shitting me? <laughs> That'll be great. I mean, people are making thirty, forty thousand dollars dollars $40,000. You're going to tax them? These are people, that's the last fucking resort. That is, you're not making enough money to make a difference. You go get that money off the people who have that money to spare. Please, God in heaven, what is... What is wrong with us that we actually have to have a vote on that? That it's that we're <laughs> serious. We are. We, we need to be institution. The whole lot of us need to be taken to an institution, and uh, and where we can sit quietly and st- stare at the walls. I I don't know what else to say about that. I mean, uh, uh, that it, 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 and James Comer, uh, I think that's, yeah, James Comer, who was, God came it up, got to get my hands on that Hunter Biden. And he's the, one of the, the driving force behind it. He doesn't ask a question, didn't ask a question, didn't ask a question, didn't ask a question. And I'm supposed to take all this seriously? Huh? I, I, I'm sp- and, and we're banning books because huh? there might be an outbreak of thought. Well, that would be something, wouldn't it? Mm, boy, that would just be, whew, imagine thoughts banging around out there and you know, banging into people's heads. What was that? That was a thought. It really hurt. It hurt my head. Can you make people stop reading? It's like, it's worse than loading a gun. Oh, boy. They still rattle off about the deep state. That's a big part of what's going on. People are worried about the deep state. There is no deep state. There's not even a state state. There's not. We're not even doing the things that a state should do. You're going to worry about a deep state. They don't even know what to do with the regular state, the state that's on top of what they consider the deep state. There's no deep state. Okay, stop it with that. No, There's no magicians. There's nobody behind there, okay? This is not the Oz. All right. It's it's not there is no one <clears throat> behind there who's manipulating stuff that is behind the behind the behind. Please forget it. It's a great story, um, but it it's it, and it's a wonderful story. And boy, if somebody find the fiction, write write it. You know, if that's what you fucking believe, write the book, idiot. If that's what you believe, write the book, because that's what you need to do and make some money. And shut the fuck up, deep state. Whew. And um, the uh, there's a, it just goes it's endless. We have a fentanyl problem. Fentanyl is killing. Uh, it's the largest cause of death for folks between the ages of folks between people between the ages of eighteen and forty five, right? Largest cause of death. And at the border in order to stop this, because it's mainly coming through on the highway. It's not coming through uh, these people that barely get through the jungle alive, all right? And uh, and, and have to march through. There. If I can guarantee if they had fentanyl on, on them, I believe that they, people would uh, jump them and steal the fentanyl and and go back onto the highway, because it's easier there. There's, in some respects, they, uh, I don't know, they, you know, they're, they're, we've got... We, we basically take cars aside. We put them up, a, a number of them, but not enough, 14%. I, I just saw this, and I can't. I tried to track down the number. It's not enough. And uh, we have once they pull the car aside, they can literally, it's like an X-ray. They can see if, if they're carrying uh, fentanyl. And uh, for $300 million, we could go and get the ones, the other machines that are sitting there, sitting there sitting there, sitting in a warehouse. We built them and it takes $300 million that we need to be able to put them, you know, to use on the border, right? 300 million. If, if this was cancer, it was 300 million. It's the largest cause of death and they can't respond. They can't come up with the 300 million, which would also require more folks at the border, which is what they, everybody wants anyway. And they're screaming, well, you got to stop the fentanyl. Well, stop it. You've got the opportunity. It's all there for you, you fucking. And, but no, we got to ask these questions over here. No, pay attention to what's in fucking front of you. God damn it. I hate, I, all I feel like is, is that 
Now I'm, 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 I've become a raving adult. I am the adult in the room. This is, uh, how sad is it that I'm the adult? It's pathetic. And down in Florida, uh, Ron DeSantis is basically with his, uh, you know, he's pushed for this thing. He got a law through and to hell with diversity at the university level. There's no need for diversity. Fuck it. And the University of Florida, I have a good friend down there and um, taught there, and I'm sure he's uh, flipping out about this. They, they, you know, may, or maybe, I don't know, but I, I, I really should call him, but I, I don't see that like diversity is something that is, we're ready to get to, to clean out of college. It's everything. They wipe the budget out for it. The reason we have it is in order to create a level playing field, okay? Because things are shitty and we've got people who need help to be able to get through it. And we've started to do it and move toward it. And it's got nothing to do with being woke. All right. We be, all become better when every one of us individually becomes better. It's that simple. It's not tough. This isn't a difficult math. Douchebags. Douchebags. Okay. And that's really got, that's all I got to say. That's it. I was thinking there's more. Nah. There's a couple of things here and there um, I'd like to share with you. This is comes from the gang I work with who helped me get this done. I had this kind of slipped through uh, my hands. A man who was wearing a kilt. A man wearing a kilt in Spring, Texas, was arrested last week for a crime that um, in which he was uh, taking items for sale at antique stores and placing them in his anus. This is in a... <laughs> and then we wonder, boy, let's worry about these kids in school, you know, what they're learning. I, it, 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 who, first he's wearing a kilt. Is he Scottish? Why? I mean, you're wearing a kilt that would make it, I guess, access. Who shoves antiques up their ass, Okay. And when you see somebody shove one antique up their ass, you grab them and say, we're going. We have a hospital here. You're going to be under observation uh, until we figure out what's going on. <laughs> because you you were really uh, completely in the, It's nuts. I, I mean, and uh, he allegedly put the taint, tainted items back on the shelves presumably so that unsuspecting shoppers would purchase them. I, I, you wonder what was making, what was going on in his head. Um, he rested on charges of criminal mischief. That's not more than mischief. I don't call that mischief. Stemming from incidents that um, uh, occurred on February 10th, I believe it is, when he was observed allegedly placing the items in his rectum. That, Oh, the kids must have loved this when they get the chance to read it. What do they worry about what's in the library, guys? Worry about books. Worry about banning books. Oh, no, there are thoughts flying around. Oh, no, there's been an outbreak of thoughts here at the high school. Oh, boy, outbreak of thoughts. Wait, what that? What hit me in the head? Somebody shot a, a, read a book and shot a thought at my head. God, he did this in... Uh, Two, two antique shops. Who knew there were that many in spring? And uh, some of the uh, he, he, some of the items, the 60-year-old allegedly contaminated. A makeup brush, an antique bottle opener. A bottle opener. A bottle opener. That would have been. And then uh, a bottle opener. Whew. And the total cost of the items was a little over $200. <laughs> the items had to be thrown away because fecal contamination. Oh, the children. Oh, our poor children. They're reading this, and it's going to inspire some kid to go, boy, I can't wait to get out there. I can't wait to get a kilt. I can't wait to shove something up my ass. Wow. Maybe they go in the library and start shoving books up their ass. Huh? Maybe that. And then, you, then there's a reason to take the books up off the shelves. Total cost of the item, $200. He was freed on $100 bond. Not not enough. We wonder why we're going to a hell in a handbasket. Not enough. Mm -mm. Not even close. And that wraps it up. 
I'm excited about this week's uh, rants. There have been some spectacular ones. I hope you enjoy them. And uh, I certainly enjoyed reading them. And keep pumping them out. Keep getting them to me. I will do as, uh, I will read as many as I can. And um, we will try to get them out to you. I'm, if I'm coming to your town and you can see that, you know, send one in. And uh, I will put it at the top of the pile and uh, we'll see if we can get something out in the cities we're going to. And uh, I read a couple or two or three each night that I'm doing my show. And uh, I hope to be able to continue to do that. And I hope you continue to, to, to write as well as you're writing. And I can, I can already see it evolving as you, uh, and, and just let me tell you, if you if it's over two or three paragraphs, realize I, it, there's some that came out this week. Um, if 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 I didn't if I'm if, you, if you're not hearing them, go back and look at it uh, and cut them down because it, it, a lot of the times it just has to do with the length of them, and I understand that. You want to get something off your chest, you really want to get it off your chest. So um, do what you got to do, write what you got to write, edit the way you can, and uh, take care of each other. And let me just say, it's always a privilege and a pleasure to spend time with you. you made my day. Here's one from our good friend, uh, Mildred Ellison. Uh, she has been writing in from the time I st- started doing the rants on stage and, uh, um, and her, it's, it's really spectacular <laughs> what she's written in. Uh, and the consistency of it and the amount, and she, I've said she could put it together in a book. Um, I'm lucky that she sends them my way uh, and puts the time and the energy and brilliance into it. And uh, it's always a pleasure to read your stuff, Mildred. Uh, I would read more of it, but then we'd have to bump a lot of people. So uh, here we go. Holy fuck. Now the correctness police have gone too far. From the British newspaper, The Daily Mirror, Mary Poppins' age rating raised over discriminatory language 60 years after release. They're raising the age rating, not because of violence or blackface or anything like that. They're doing it because a guy says hot and tots twice. That's it. Hot and tots. Holy fuck. If you're triggered by someone saying hot and tots, you need to just stay in bed and burrow your stupid fucking head under the covers because there's a hell of a lot of other stuff, namely every fucking thing that's going to get your... Sorry, sensitive ass puckered. Jeez Louise, it's Mary fucking Poppins and someone's upset over fucking Hottentots. I I mean, I should know what it is. Um, I've just looked it up and you can look it up. And I'm astonished uh, that anyone would even know it it was, uh, you know, a, a discriminatory word. Unless you were 90, I guess, because I'm old. I mean, you'd have to remember it. I don't remember the word from Zin. I don't even know if I saw Mary Poppins, for God's sake. But (laughs) Mildred, thank you for spotting that. And uh, (laughs) I enjoyed reading it. Barry Yates sent this along to us. (laughs) And once again, uh, haven't heard (laughs) much on this subject. Lewis, I have a serious problem about aliens. Not the folks coming here looking for a better life, uh, but instead those slimy green space alien motherfuckers. I know what you're thinking. It's, well, well, I'm one of those uh, aluminum foil hat-wearing loons. Au contraire. Although the internet claims the new no-stick foil works best, I am simply a somewhat concerned citizen. I mean, these little fuckers apparently take great joy in buzzing our military and commercial jets with that look what the fuck I can do that you can't attitude. They show up in ancient books, paintings, and cave drawings. The few sad fuckers they've kidnapped seem to be left bewildered with nothing worse than an anal probe or two. I mean, really, why the fuck are they so fascinated with our asses, I ask you? Hmm? And why won't they stop and say hello? Could it be that in every alien movie they royally suck, sometimes literally, and we end up annihilating the fuck out of every last one of them, along with their mothership and occasionally their home planet? 
Did Mork and Mindy offend them? How about ALF? Do they consider us the illegal aliens of the Milky Way? Or is it the fact we kill each other? It's such an alarming clip they've decided to pass us by. Pardon me, mankind, but what the fuck? Have a nice life, Lewis. Thanks for the memories and try to avoid remote country roads at night. Trust me on this one. I will, Barry, and I, I appreciated that, that, that rant about aliens. Thank you for that. <laughs> See you down a country road. Pop bow. Brandon Henry. Uh, and these I love because it's a response to a, a previous rant. I love when one guy or one woman rants and someone responds to that rant. Thank you for that, Brandon. Here we go. After seeing your show in Omaha, Nebraska on Sunday, February 25th, and listening to the rant you read from Bryce the Corn Addict from Iowa, I am reminded as to why Iowa is an acronym for the phrase, Idiots Out Wandering Around. Does Cornholio Bryce from Iowa not realize his unhealthy prediction in relationship with corn is weird? And it seems like he's sexually attracted to ears of corn. One has to wonder what really goes on within the confines of Iowa cornfields to make one so attracted to corn in such a way. I know he said Iowa corn doesn't need butter, but for the sake of his cornhole, I hope he uses some for lube. And that is the only thing Iowa corn is good for. Wow. Well, Iowa and Nebraska corn. I didn't know there was Nebraska corn, but I guess there's corn everywhere. I've, I've enjoyed uh, a corn in Illinois, actually, one summer. Never forget it. They're producing a play of mine up there. It, it man, it mans, in Mansfield, uh, just outside of Mansfield, Ohio, at uh, Kenyon College. And we were doing a show there, and we could get ears of corn every day, fresh as hell. They were phenomenal. Um, and they always need butter, okay? You double down on the butter. Always double down on the butter, okay? Even if it might cause phlegm. <laughs> that's, that's the big news today. All right. Thanks, Brandon. <laughs> I've tickled myself here from Claude Crapit, if if that's really your name. <laughs> it's, it's certainly. <laughs> well, here we go, Claude, and thank you. I remember a time when gas was selling for 25 cents to 35 cents a gallon. And you don't you didn't have to pump it yourself. In fact, a person would not only come out and pump the gas into your car, they would clean your window. Fill up the windshield washer fluid, check and offer to add engine oil if it was low. And the gas station made a profit. The oil refinery made a profit. And the oil company made a profit. Huh? Plus, they would give you stamps to buy dishes and shit. But then the oil companies figured out, we don't need to pay people to pump gas. We will make the driver do all that crap, and we will put a convenience shop next to the pump and sell stuff around in a grocery store for twice as much and make even more money. No fucking wonder their profits went up. Stores are now trying to do the same thing with self-checkouts, except they're discovering there's a lot of people who forget to scan everything. Warms the cockles of my heart. <laughs> How about you? I don't know where my cockles are, Mr. Crappett, but I enjoyed reading your rant. And it it really is astonishing. It, it's just astonishing. In Jersey, they still pump gas. Or they did the last time I went through there. Yep. Kind of amazing. New Jersey. Reason to live there. And maybe it should have on the license plate. We still pump gas. New Jersey, we still pump gas. Michelle Remis is uh, upset about something that I wouldn't know about because I don't drive anymore. And I mean, I have enough trouble when I get into a car sometimes trying to figure out where the handle is to get in, where the, where the, where the variety of new things are that they put for me to, and they're not even a variety. It's just how do you close the door? How do you lock the door? Which is the lock? Which will open the door? Will I die on the superhighway? 
is I open it up. And who uses the word superhighway? I, I'm, whew, I guess it's been a long day. Here we go, Michelle. I didn't mean to babble on. I don't know if you've driven or bought a new car in recent years, but new cars have a new gem of a feature called Stop Start. For those of us that don't know what this is, it is a feature that turns off the engine of your car while you're at a stop, like at a light, and then turns the car back on when you step on the gas. Who the fuck decided that this is something anyone would want? Huh? Generally, your car engine dying at a stop anywhere is supposed to be a driver's worst fucking nightmare. Not a desirable trait, especially as old folks that drove stick shift. Your car dying was one of the worst possible things that could happen while on the road. Well, fuck that. Can you get a new car without this? No. Can you permanently disable it? No. Because nobody would ever voluntarily live with this nightmare if they didn't have to. Do you have the option? to disable it temporarily. Every fucking time you turn the car on, you have to press a stupid button. And you don't remember to press the button every fucking time you turn the car on. If you forget, you'll get reminded every time you come to a stop with the ensuing panic attack, worried if your car is broken down or if you just forgot to press that fucking button again. Supposedly, it saves on gas like a whole half a gallon a year but you get to replace the battery more. Oh, goody, huh? I'm sure disposing of car batteries more often really has that positive effect that we're looking for. Totally worth the stress. Not. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you very much. I wouldn't have known about that start-stop, and uh, I don't quite understand it. Uh, not uh, Why? Robert Fling is pissed, and I think you'll see why. You know what makes me batshit crazy? When people have typos on the signage of their business, either on a truck, a business card, website, any or anything else. If you can't take the time to make sure you look professional, how the fuck am I supposed to trust you to do work for me? Just goes to show you the tailspin this country is in. It all started when everyone got a trophy, and it's steadily gotten worse. So much for paying attention, you fucking idiots. Go back to the third grade and try the fuck again. My blood pressure is going into the stratosphere just thinking about it. Oh, and if you read the directions to things lately, it's like trying to interpret hieroglyphics. They don't make any fucking sense. You're better off just winging it. So if I put this thing together upside down and backwards, at least I take responsibility for it. Unbelievable. Lewis, you have to do something about this. Well, Robert, I, I would love to, but uh, I just haven't got the time. And I, I guarantee I will have no effect. I've had no effect on anything. It looks like you're wearing a fireman's hat here in the picture, Robert. And if you do, boy, wow. You guys really amaze me. And uh, you saved my dad's life way back when. And, uh, uh, and thanks, Robert. Or maybe you just wore it for a costume party, but I enjoyed reading your uh, rant, and you're right about it. It's unbelievable. It's extraordinary. And it does get worse, and it's going to continue to get worse, okay? The, I, I can't even go into it. Um, it, it, and it won't help. Howard Toller has a complaint about our choices for the presidency, and who can blame him? See what you think. <laughs> Have you seen our options as of late? First up, we've got old Joe Biden, the human equivalent of a warm bowl of oatmeal. I mean, have you seen the guy try to string a sentence together? It's like watching someone play Mad Libs with a dictionary and a handful of marbles. And don't even get me started on his love affair with ice cream. I swear the man's got more flavors than Baskin Robbins. But hey, at least with Biden, you know what you're getting, a good old-fashioned case of foot-and-mouth disease and a side of aviator sunglasses. He's like your grandpa trying to figure out how to use TikTok. You just can't look away. And then we've got the one and only Donald Trump, the human equivalent of a reality TV show gone horribly wrong. I mean, say what you will about the guy, but he's got the hair of a majestic golden retriever and the temperament of a toddler in a toy store. 
He's like a walking meme generator. Every time he opens his mouth, it's like a punchline waiting to happen. And let's not forget his love affair with Twitter. Ooh, good. The man tweets more than a flock of birds on a caffeine bender. It's like he's got a direct line to the collective unconscious of the Internet. And he's not afraid to use it. Even if it means stirring up more controversy than a bull in a china shop. But hey, love him or hate him, you can't deny that Biden and Trump are the dynamic duo of American politics. Like Batman and Robin. If Batman wore dentures and Robin had a spray tan. So here's to the absurdity of it all, folks. Enjoy the circus. Well, I don't know if we're going to be enjoying it. It's, it's, we're going, it's like, can we get out of the loop? We're caught in a fucking loop and it just repeats itself. And now we got to go back and do this. We're not, why are we playing this out again? Who does this to themselves? Except when you've been given no real input into what the fuck's happening. Well, 70% of us want someone different. Well, we're not going to look for someone different. Go fuck yourselves. Thank you, Howard. Now I'm all fucking riled up. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Wow. The dynamic duo. Belinda Quinton is quickly going to get something off her chest. The thing that makes me nuts is my bad. My bad is what a lot of young people have put in place of excuse me. If it was just young folks, okay, they'll get over it. But they're grown people. People in their 50s, even 60s are saying it. Stop. Well, they're, they're not going to stop, Belinda. They don't until the next thing comes along, like my screw up or they'll come up with something. And I will no doubt it irritate you. Um, and then she goes on. I'm just going to because it's sitting right here. No problem is what is used for your welcome. I dare you to say thank you so you can hear it. No problem. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Uh, no problem is what is used for you. You're welcome. <laughs> no problem. It's true. I dare you to say thank you so you can hear it. No problem. <laughs> wow. I don't know why I repeated that, but uh, thanks, Belinda. I do love the quickies, <laughs> and here's one from Edwin Hewitt, and well put, I might say. I remember many years ago, an old friend told me, all of Congress is corrupt. I thought that seemed like an overstatement. Then he added, they spend millions to get a $100,000 salary. And then, somehow, with a $100,000 salary, they become millionaires. Maybe he had a point. Well, he... You certainly had a point, except uh, we're the ones spending the millions. We're the ones feeding their coffers. We're the ones who give it to two parties uh, who don't really give a shit about what we're interested in. Uh, I mean, I mean, in the sense of uh, the, the choices sometimes are just staggering. I mean, it, you, you, you say, you know, uh, can you find somebody? There needs to be the lever that says, kill me now or try again, or uh, there's one in Michigan and it's slipped my mind because I still haven't gotten over a few, a few of these that I read earlier. Guess which ones? All right. Uh, thank you, Edwin. Thank you so kindly. Here's a bit of righteous rage from Krista Graves, and uh, it's always good to get something from someone who is dealing with problems that uh, we've already forgotten about. We don't talk about this anymore. And people continue to suffer through it. And Krista is pissed. And I don't blame her one fucking bit. Um, it's amazing how this stuff falls by the wayside. So thank you for sharing this. Dear Lewis, I'm writing you from 1.2 miles from the Norfolk Southern train derailment. It's always spoke about as East Palestine, Ohio, which is the city a few hundred feet from the point of derailment, though it happened in the township. Nothing has been done right here. Many have left, 
They've sold homes to others, some of who got sick. Some renters left very quickly. Others have been unable to sell their homes. Some, some still live there. Others took out mortgages they couldn't afford to live somewhere safer, yet now have the expense of both homes. Others fear selling a home they are stuck in, in an environment that they, they, that they can get sick in, to others. We have asked to be bought out. There was a talk early on of a one to two mile buyout, which quickly went away. The community has two camps, so to speak. One is, this is the site of the nation's largest chemical disaster, and it's not safe. We are sick, and the APA, EPA has a dismal record of protecting human health. We need the country to know that people are suffering, and our voices are not heard. Mainstream media clips our interviews. The mayor wants to push a narrative that it's all good and move forward with a plan to encourage new residents to move in when the health of the existing residents of the multiply, multiple affected communities is not being addressed. They are focusing only on East Palestine, Unity Township, Ohio, Middleton Township, Negley, Ohio, and Darlington Township, and Chippewa Township, Pennsylvania, were also directly affected. Please get the word out that we are still here and many still suffering. Biden came and went over a year later with only a promise of grants for health studies, not treatment, not removing people from the toxic environment. You can look back to Love Canal, New York, Times Beach, Missouri, 911 Ground Zero, and Gulf War burn pits to have an indication of what's to come. Norfolk Southern needs to buy out everyone within their five-mile map who wants to move on without transferring risk and assume responsibility for their chemical bomb. We still have residents in temporary housing, hotels they are trying to force back into homes that they, got, they get sick in, some lucky enough to have private testing that came up with very high chemicals. Others have only their body reactions to rely on. Some not yet having symptoms don't want to take the chance. The city and county officials, along with the EPA and Norfolk Southern, want to southern our voices. I, I'm not sure what that means. Want to stifle our voices is what I think. Seemingly content to let us be lab rats to keep the bottom line, to keep the benefits of a $25 million park revamp for a city of 4700 with a median income of about $40,000 yearly. They can't maintain the existing park in town because it's contaminated for a community likely to be facing major health issues over the next few years. I'm sorry if I muddled through that a little because there was some, uh, uh, yeah, there were the, uh, I just uh, missed some, I'm sorry to have uh, stumbled through that. But um, it, it, some of it was uh, difficult to, because of, you know, that typo fuck thing. Smell check. Uh, and uh, if you need to say anything else, uh, Krista, please do. Um, if you want to clarify some things that I may have muddled. But the most important, I think, is the fact that you've told us that they're, well, they're screwing you, which is really uh, unbelievable. Um, they, they, like you said, 9 11, it took forever. Love Canal forever. Uh, yeah, fuck. I deeply appreciate you sharing. And, and those of you who are out there who are dealing with something that's in the, in, in line with, uh, you know, right, if you're in that target area for shit that's occurring, um, let's, let, let us, let the folks out there know what's happening. Okay. I'll read it. You scream it, or I'll scream it. <laughs> you write it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Krista. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant cast. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters and the splendid rants they gave us. 
Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me. Aha, Lewis Black. Our live rant audio was produced by James Salter. Our theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brew. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly.